niche or is it niche or is it Nike? <clears throat> and how do you find yours? Hello, fellow burgers. My name is Mike and I have about a year and a half experience selling on eBay. And I really think I have a good understanding of how to find your niche on selling on eBay and what it really takes. So today we're going to talk to you about that. And with me today is... Hi, I'm Jen, and I've been selling on eBay for about a year now, and I have found my niche in vintage Tupperware. <laughs> That's right. Definitely have. We, we've really got into the vintage Tupperware, haven't we? <clears throat> Doing really good with it. So a uh, little bit of an update. We went on vacation. We did. Mm -hmm. Took a little break. And that's always scary when you put your store on vacation mode because we had been averaging two or three sales a day. <laughs> and then having to turn your store on vacation mode, we hear a lot of horror stories that people say that their sales drop. Yeah. So really scared about that. But we went on vacation for a couple of weeks, came back, and it turns out that your sales don't drop. They just come right back after <laughs> you start your vacation, turn your vacation mode off. They can. And we also combined going on vacation and returning with another big change to our store. We lowered our promoted rating or our promoted yeah. percentage on all of our listings. Over 500 listings, we've we've decreased the percentage that we would like to give to eBay. And so we also kind of are experiencing that as well. And so we don't know how much of it is lower promoted rating and how much of it is just returning from eBay. Yeah. So. It sure has been nice though, not giving eBay so much more money. Really has. <laughs> and to be fair, the reason why we did do that in the beginning when we were getting the we're giving them about ten or twelve percent and promoted was because we put a lot of money in that initial investment in the Tupperware and we needed to make that money back quick. Yeah. And I feel like it did help us recoup that initial investment quickly, more quickly yeah. than we would have otherwise. So, so a little bit was uh, out of fear, but uh, it definitely helped us out because it definitely got us to the top of the list yeah. for a while there. And more sales meant more potential good reviews as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, building that base of uh, positive feedback was was worth the yeah. additional percentage as well. <laughs> Kind of like instead of uh, giving stuff away for what the, what do they call that on social media when they're giving just like, like promotion like promotional value buying marketing reviews value. or something like yeah. that <laughs> buying reviews when they sell something for a dollar ninety nine with free shipping you're like how in the world can you do that you can't it's, do that it's totally one of the most common <clears throat> questions I'm seeing <clears throat> in our Facebook group that we also are a part of people are very curious about how people are making money selling things for yeah. such low amounts and then free shipping well the answer is that they're 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 not making problems yeah they're buying reviews right yeah it's a couple different things all right perfect so we talked about the two things i want to talk about you have any sales updates you want to give us yeah i mean since we returned back to work on january the 15th uh, we've had about 15 sales go through one of those is going to end up being a return um one of our first returns uh with a, you know, that was kind of wild too, wasn't it? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't see that one coming out of um, any predictability. Uh, a lady made an offer on an item, which was $10 less than our listed price. But because we were trying to get back into the swing of having sales from, from that vacation, I was very keen to take you know, even a little bit of a low ball offer, especially knowing that we were paying a lower percentage to eBay. And so I looked at the reviews that she had for herself and both had left for other people and they all checked out good. And so I kind of took a little bit of a low ball offer to make a sale that day. And I really regret it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, as soon as the item had shipped, we started receiving just some very interestingly worded uh, messages in the, in the email mm -hmm. feature and they were um, kind of relentless to the point where I couldn't quite get a response in before we received several more messages. And so um, we were very nervous that it was going to turn into a contentious situation. But I think that we might have resolved it in a way where we only lose about five or six dollars and we probably won't receive any negative feedback. Like I'm hoping yeah. that we don't receive any negative feedback. I, I tried really hard to... Um, kind of resurrect this situation that definitely wasn't our fault. Uh, and so, you know, I know they happen. People people comment about it a lot on our Facebook group. And uh, we just happened to land ourselves one of the uh, challenging customers right. the first week we came back. 
<laughs> yeah, it was just one of those customers that <clears throat> bought it and immediately had buyer's remorse yeah. and was like, I want to return. I didn't I didn't want to buy this. And it's like, I want all my money back. And I'm like, well, you can offer a return, but we're not paying for your shipping. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not, I'm, it's already shipped out. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, <clears throat> and I saw the conversation went from being pretty aggressive and negative to yeah. you really calmed her down. And I think that you're right. That's just going to leave us, not leave us a bad review. Just no review would be great. Yeah, no review at <laughs> just, all is fine no with review. us. <laughs> um, she definitely <clears throat> went from just sort of like berating us from, um, you know, just uh, that we were a ripoff and saying like pretty pretty harsh negative things about us even though we took like ten dollars less on, yeah. the, on the offer and she submitted the offer so i don't understand how we took advantage um but you know everybody has a unique perspective yeah. on things and so uh the, she definitely didn't want to keep the item because i offered to give her like free shipping just to keep it and um so uh, you know it was just one of those buyer's remorse situations i think and uh yeah. hopefully we all learned a lesson yeah. <laughs> And if you want to learn more about how to handle the trolls that get behind the computer, go ahead and listen to our episode on social media trolls. But it's it's bound to happen, right? Like yes. you're going to get one every now and then. Yeah. So. so it's good to know how to deal with that. I think you handled it well. Well, thank you. All right. What other kind of updates do you have? Since returning back from vacation, I had two opportunities to really help some people, which made me really excited. Like, it's not every day that uh, what we can do feels just like meaningful, and right. so. Right out of the gate, we had a message from a lady saying that she wanted to um, of an item that we had listed. They were some kitchen utensils, some spoons that hadn't been made for years. And, you know, her and her brother were wanting them and they just don't make them anymore. And she just was so thrilled that we had two and that they were still available and got those right out to her. And we charged her double because she wanted them so bad? No, but she paid full <laughs> price. And so we ended up on, um, it was two sets of two like open nested utensil spoons. And so our profit ended up being $49.90 on that. I love it. I love it when people buy multiples. That mm -hmm. works in our favor really well. And then there was another lady that had reached out. She was very thrilled with her purchase of a set of impressions bowls. They were green and they were kind of close to my favorite shade of green and I almost kept them for myself, but we don't really need um, any Tupperware. No. Like, well, let me keep any. Um, so <laughs> um, her daughter had melted one of the bowls on the range uh, years ago and she had always wanted a replacement for it and her daughter wanted a set as well. Oh, that's so And cool. so it just made my heart so happy to get those mailed out yeah. to her. Um, the profit on those, that set of three bowls was $26.98 after all the fees and the shipping and stuff. But it really felt nice to only give eBay a much smaller percentage of both of those. Yeah, <laughs> it was a dramatic difference in the percentage yeah. too. And so we're, we're testing it out for you guys that the, if you lower your pro promoter percentage, it still works out for you. You still get the sales. So I do feel like we still see fewer sales, but it has taken me a little bit to get back into the swing of posting a large amount of items per day. Again, I still am posting every single day very consistently, but uh, the, the flow got a little interrupted um, for our household due to a little bit of illness mm. and, um, some other higher priorities that just needed to be uh, more important. And so that's one of the wonderful things about self-employment. You can reprioritize your day-to-day -day needs yeah. and it can make sense for your household. So I'm always grateful that that I'm able to do that type of work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You guys can probably still hear it in my voice, but I ended up getting double pneumonia and was really sick. And the doctor was actually going to uh, put me in the hospital to give me some IV antibiotics. <clears throat> If I didn't improve, so thankfully today, I don't know what's going on right now, but today I've been feeling 100% better. Yeah, you do sound a lot better. Yeah. Still mm. a little, still a little there, but you're, you've been a trooper. Just <laughs> a little bit. Yep. The couch has been my friend. I've caught up on a lot of TV. In you've reached the, the bottom of the internet as I well. I reached <laughs> the bottom of uh, Amazon Prime, to be honest oh, with you. Oh, no. <clears throat> All right, so let's yeah. dive into our topic. How do you find your niche? What is a niche? Wonderful. What What is it even? How do you even say it? What's the correct way to say it? You're the I, English major. I've always heard it was niche. You know, You've always I, heard? I thought I've you knew for heard. sure. Well, I feel pretty confident. Uh, it's um, niche? It's not it's niche. niche? No, I don't think it's niche. And it's not Nike? I, uh, no. No. It's not okay. Nike. I don't know how you ever get that out of <laughs> 
<laughs> that just still that feels ridiculous. But your niche, um, you know, it's uh, it's something you've got to fund, right? You've got to explore what you would like to resell and what you can be happy and passionate about. And absolutely, found ours. <laughs> yeah, it's really what you are. The way I'd equate it to is like, what's your hobby? What do you enjoy doing? And that's one thing with eBay, like people get into eBay and they think, oh, it's just all profit. I'm going to make so much money. It's so much fun, but it's a lot of work, man. It's you really have to love what you're doing and it helps. It helps out a lot if you love what you're doing. So finding your niche, something you're passionate about, something you like, something you know something about is really going to increase uh, the joy of doing eBay. So. That would be number one for us. It's find your passion, your expertise. Your niche should ideally be something that you're genuinely interested in. Mm -hmm. Like you're genuinely interested in Tupperware. I love, 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 love vintage Tupperware for some reason. And I love following this gal on social media. Her specialty is vintage glassware. And oh. I also love to watch her videos on vintage glass. And so um, that's primarily what she sells. Yeah. And a little bit of vintage brass. So... You know, there's just so many things to choose from. <laughs> right. So I would encourage you to, if it brings you joy in your heart, when you watch it, if you find yourself watching on social media, like you said, or if you enjoy just having a hobby like that, uh, really stick to that. And that is going to be what your niche is. And you really want to, you really want to be careful with that though, because if you have, if your niche is something really obscure then it's probably not going to be a high turnover and it's pro it might be high profit though. Right. But yeah. you have to expect whatever it is with your niche. Like for an example, Carl's is video games. He's great at video games, video systems. There's a ton of money in it and it turns over really super fast. So Yeah, and I would never think to buy video games. Like I wouldn't know the last right. thing. <laughs> exactly. So it's just what you got in there. Some people are into uh auto parts. Like I know a lot about cars too. So one of my niches could be auto parts. So finding them like garage sales or finding them for discounted prices and then being able to, to sell them because I know a lot about them. I could do really well with them too. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to make those listings though. <laughs> exactly. I've got a, I've got a pile in my office that I need to list because they're all boy stuff, right? Boy things. <laughs> gotcha. I do try to do <clears throat> some of the boy things with your help, uh, but they are challenging for me, much yeah. more challenging. And I, and it, it kind of interrupts the flow when I don't understand what it, the thing that I'm listing or I have to do like a lot of research for it. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's just a little easier if we stick to something that we can know well and, and kind of perfect. All right. Yeah. It makes it a lot more fun to be listing too. Or something that you can get your hands on enough of so that you can become proficient at it. Mm -hmm. like, I'm not sure that I ever thought that Tupperware would become my niche, but we got enough of it to make it worthwhile in becoming an expert at it and also I love kitchen items and I yeah. love to cook and bake and things and so I know what most of these things do you know and so that that foundation of it plays into you it being a successful niche for me to post about <laughs> yeah 100 percent. all right what's your number two um dive mm. into the ebay data that, that it can be out there for you mm. yeah, ebay offers a lot of tools like Terapeak and market insights so that you can analyze, you know, the research trends and the competitor activity and the selling prices in this, within the specific categories. So at first, I was a little hesitant to use the Terapeak. I didn't understand why it would be any better or different or easier for me to find information about some of these vintage pieces. But lately, I have definitely found that to be very helpful on some of the more rare items. A lot of these things that we have there are a lot of listings out there that I can find really good sales information on there have been a few where I've found something that was sort of the same but not quite the same and so that's where Terapeak has really been very useful to me in mm -hmm. finding old older sales um so absolutely so if you're looking at a niche or if you're wondering if this is going to be a good niche Terapeak or the eBay data is going to be perfect for you to look at it then you can get your your uh your sell through rate and see if it's a good profit margin or not that you can work into. I love that. Um, the next one is going to be to identify subcategories with a consistent demand or moderate competition and, you know, just some healthy profit margins. For us, as we were examining the Tupperware, you got to think about how long Tupperware has been in 
business in producing products that people have consistently purchased. Now, that history is long. And so it's proven that even during times of like economic hardship or downturn um, or, you know, like wars in the world or like things where you would think where maybe people aren't buying certain things, um, products for household seem to be an item that no matter how things bad things get, people still need things to cook their food, prepare their food, store their food. And so for us, um, knowing that the product that we were investing in in the storage unit was something that had a history of very successful sales. <laughs> I mean, when it was mm -hmm. new, especially, and um, a lot of people just have an appreciation and that nostalgia that comes with like trying to replace an old piece or trying to find something that grandma had in her house or something. And so we've seen that some of these long standing brands have really survived well. Um, and so that made that one a good investment for us. But you'd have to do that research to know whether or not a product was just going to have that consistent demand. Yeah, that's great advice. They call that recession proof items. Yeah, yeah. And it really does seem and you see that a lot. Like there are still things that no matter what women especially <laughs> are gonna spend money on. And we are naturally caretakers and providers. And so we want things that make our job nicer, easier, more enjoyable to do. And so um quality kitchen products that, you know, withstand literally years of use are are really going to be a good choice so yeah my next one is you want to think beyond the mainstream so and what that kind of means is so like i mentioned earlier everybody knows that video games are a great item to sell on ebay uh, baseball cards are a great item to sell on ebay but what you want to do is consider going into the micro niches of it so like if you're looking at video games so dive into like early day Sony or Atari or just dive into controllers or little tiny things or a certain specific video game that nobody's uh, that everybody wants. Like everybody wants Mario Kart and Mar the Mario games are really, really high and high demand. But so just basically what it means is dive deeper into the niche. Like, like if we're into Tupperware, <clears throat> for example, for Tupperware, we could become experts to dive into the niche even more is go into rock and serve or sheerly yeah. elegance or just utensils only. Like yeah. That's what micro niching is. Beyond our initial purchase, you know, when we go to purchase out in the world, um, we probably will know better what to choose if, yeah. as a result. Mm. And I think that like Coral is a really good example of um, the video games. He only sells clean or like general audience video games when he finds other ones out i think that he just he chooses not to sell them and so people can come to know that when they shop his store they're not accidentally going to purchase something that's maybe for a mature audience mm -hmm. like he's cultivated a store that has you know appropriate um video games and so that's kind of how he is like micro uh yeah down, yeah you know, exactly so like, could be could marketed you, that way you call it a subcategory sub yeah but it's very marketable because you know uh, for me if i was shopping and mm -hmm. i don't know anything about video games and i'd be on the ratings that are on them it would just be nice if they all were i knew that they were going to be in good used condition i knew that they were going to work and i knew that all of them that were for sale were going to be appropriate for my children right. so yeah you know all right so what's uh what's your number four Definitely leverage your existing resources. So okay. look around your home, figure out what your own hobbies are, and network for potential inventory. Um, for us, we started off listing a lot of our own mm -hmm. items, <laughs> like junk that we probably would have donated that was maybe a little bit nicer than a yard sale. Um, we were tremendously successful with just like a wide range of things. Right. I really gave us good practice at making the listings and not being so concerned if like we screwed up or maybe just didn't make the profit that we thought that we were mm -hmm. going to or something kind of went wrong with the shipping label you know like we paid too much or um so it's it's always good like if you're starting out just start with your own stuff go around the house and collect the boxes yeah. that you don't need anymore and go get them out there and get them listed you know you yeah. might be surprised we got a review that actually gives us a hard time about still selling our own stuff but i'm i'm gonna sell our own stuff for a long time so it's 
There's going to be times when I'm done with my hobby and I'm going to sell that stuff because yes. I don't want to donate it or get rid of it. I mean, um, we sort them into categories in our stores. So if you don't want to shop mm-hmm. those things, all of the vintage Tupperware yeah. is in one category. Yeah. Go there. <laughs> I'm sorry to the local donation places, but we're no longer donating things. We're selling them. That's how we donate. Yeah. Or, the, it, or it'll be phased out. So it'll go from eBay to like maybe if it hangs out for way too long, yeah. uh, then, then it goes to maybe a yard sale and then perhaps maybe the filing gets donated. But I technically am using a lot of those older listings. So I actually using a lot of those items for when we need a break or we need to make sure that we have items scheduled. So for example, when we went on vacation, I ended about 25 of our listings for just our personal items that we were selling. And then I did a sell as, and then I scheduled a couple to happen for each day of our vacation so that it might game the system and the algorithm a little on eBay. I don't know if it helped or not, but um, I like to believe that it did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, it was not that big of a deal. To it only took me maybe a half an hour to do that, mm-hmm. and then I, you know, then I kind of bought myself some time on both ends of the vacation as well. <laughs> yeah, and that way you uh, you it's a good way to take a couple of days off because you can still schedule a listing. So you're listing something at least every single day and without having to actually list it every single day or in your old ones. <clears throat> or it just takes a couple of minutes, you know? Right. And a good example of the old stuff is like that Chris Weber bobblehead doll that had it. it I mean, come that on. thing had been sitting in our inventory forever and it finally sold. For some reason, when mm-hmm. you get the, uh, notifications to your phone from ebay mm-hmm. you get them a, approximately a few seconds before i get them and we were both on the couch and you weren't feeling very well you were still pretty sick and i look over at you and you just smiled at me <laughs> and i was like it, it popped up on my phone and i could not believe that it had sold one I know. and i like i believe i said are you even kidding me right <laughs> now i could not believe this thing just sold no it was not a tremendous money maker by any stretch of the imagination but some of these items that have just been listed forever or i have relisted them and relisted them and relisted them it it still blows my mind it still absolutely blows my mind that somebody would be out there that they would find it that they would want it and that they would purchase it just goes to show you if you have the room for the inventory just hold on to it and eventually sell does the top of makes utter sense to me but some of the nonsense items that we have i just it's still just every time it happens, it's just the coolest thing. I love it. That's the beauty of eBay is people go to look for the weirdest stuff. Like yeah. when I want weird stuff that I know nobody else is going to have, I look for eBay yeah. because they're gonna it's going to be on there. I have even started to search more on eBay. I was not a huge eBay shopper. Mm-hmm. Occasionally, I would find myself on eBay buying something, but now... I find myself checking the prices or searching eBay to see if I can Mm -hmm. find it there instead. Or, you know, I've discovered that I I don't like to sell books on eBay, but um, I sure do like to purchase books on eBay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) For those people who love to give them away with free shipping, um, I will take advantage of that. I love to I'll leave you a good review on it also. (laughs) I will leave you the best review. Um, Anytime I can buy four books for like $13 flat, like Mm -hmm. it's it's a happy day for me. Right, (laughs) exactly. Mm -hmm. My last turn or our last one is to test and iterate. So test and mix it up. Go into if you find something, if you're if you're wanting to find a new niche, just find something that brings you joy and test it out. Sell a few of them. See if they do your research on Terapeak and then and then list them and see how well they do. See if there is a good profit margin. And if it doesn't work, I mean it's no real big loss to you because you, know, you just want to test and monitor the performance of what's going on. You want to analyze the feedback. You want to track the sales. Obviously, don't just throw them out there and be like, oh, well, I don't know if they're doing well because I haven't been tracking them. So you want to be able to just open up a quick spreadsheet to write down a piece of paper and track your sales to keep keep, uh, a list of what's going on. And then remember, finding your perfect niche can be an ongoing process. And I don't know about you, but my hobbies change all the time. So what I like for six months is going to change six months later. I'm going to like something else. So your hobbies can definitely change. So, and I think if I were to pick a new, a new secondary niche, or if we were still in the process, I think one of the things that we found along the way at an estate sale or several estate sales were 
they were more masculine items, but they were pretty tremendously successful. Um, some of the gun reloading equipment, <laughs> um, some of the like fishing kind of yeah. items mm -hmm. and um, like hunting things, fishing vests. Um, so uh, we do see a pretty good amount of those types of things on, you know, yard sales and estate sales yeah. at those places. And so um, I can see how as you go to retire from your other profession one day, you will probably gravitate towards items like that because we right. have a good success with those those particular things as well and you know them well so and we live in an area in a mountainous area it's fishing and hunting yeah. related so i don't think we shipped anything super close by though <laughs> no exactly I mean, but we the point is we see a lot of that stuff because a lot of that is uh the hobbies up here and that comes with a lot of caveats so if you're thinking oh i'm gonna look for fishing and hunting as mike and jen said to you it we look for the good stuff yeah. It's got to be in good quality. Or if you know the brand of the item and it's kind of worn, but you know that the brand is a well-made brand, then you pick it up. But that's something that you want to do your research on. But I always look for just like something that looks new, yeah. new. And even if I don't, if it's not a good brand name, if it looks new and they're selling it for one to two to five bucks, yeah, I'm going to pick it up because I know I'll be able to sell it for 15 or 25. Yeah. Especially odd sizes. Now you may have to wait a while before you sell the brand new pair of camouflage five extra large <laughs> with the tags, yeah. you know, coveralls, but you know, the, you, those are maybe harder to come by. And so we've had a few things where we had the size was really interesting. And um, I think I'd stay away from the five X two X is about as big as I would go. It's so, I don't know. I don't know what size it was big, yeah, but um, they were big. You know, big and tall kind of, sizing but large extra large is really common in men's so you want to take those kind of common items that you're looking for i like to pick up things that i would buy myself like that mm -hmm. i would that i would that's be happy 100 percent. you know great so advice. when i look at it and i think oh that's cute or that's neat i mean i don't need it or want to bring it into my home but um it's been an interesting adjustment because I would often go to yard sales and, and estate sales and see lots of things that I can appreciate and think, oh, that's neat. That's yeah. fun. That's like kitschy and vintagey. And like, I love it, but it doesn't really fit my mm -hmm. home. I don't want to bring it into my home. But now I have a way to like bring it and appreciate it and then get the joy of sending it off to its next <laughs> nice. place to be appreciated. <laughs> it's like the joy of buying it, but the joy of selling it and making money off. I get all the like little all, all the, Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> I good. I get the whole love it so um, i love it i like it i do it's cool. fun <laughs> awesome <clears throat> all right so you have a bonus tip for us what's that last sure. bonus tip? all right our other bonus tip is going to be to join online communities and forums related to your potential niche or just engage with other buyers and sellers online to learn from their experiences they have valuable insights to inform your ebay journey along the way i can't tell you how much that i have learned for some of the the ebay forums that we are a part of right. however i will say like they can they can skew negative really quickly and so if you're the kind of person that greatly affects you then you know put that through the filter of whether or not you want that to be a part of your day-to-day -day basis i personally have the ability to read something and to just keep scrolling i don't feel the need to comment or to join mm -hmm. in on an argument or anything like that um so for me i don't feel overly affected by it but um some of these forums can turn kind of contentious and a little little negative but there's yeah. so many like good little nuggets to mine in there that you know for me it's okay but if you're someone who's can be affected by that i would, I would caution like you could get sucked into like a lot of yeah. don't internalize the trolls no trolls comments we just can't allow that to happen <laughs> you know another uh that brings up a good a good um piece of advice too when on some of those facebook groups mm -hmm. and don't take this the wrong way for those of you out there that do this but i've seen a lot of stuff that are asking for prices on those facebook groups and they're really common items it's like those Facebook groups are meant for the uncommon items to try to find the answers that you can't find by looking up on eBay yourself. So do your leg work and look on eBay and, and look for comps and stuff like that before you go post it on those groups because it becomes really watered down for the people that are really looking for the good information that are using those Facebook groups for the valuable information on what they're trying to look for. But It's a lot to scroll through. 
you know. Yeah, it makes a lot. It's a lot of uh, noise and confusion. And then there's all the other people mm. that will respond like, but did you Google it? You know? I know, <laughs> like, I know. And that's so true. Yeah. It's like, did you Google it? it like, really is. I will, I will like research something to death before I ask you practically. Because <laughs> yeah. I know what you'd be like, did you just Google it? I'm like, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's, there's way too many tools to find that stuff yeah. out there. But it, they are a good resource on how to find the obscure ones that you're looking for. And I'll be honest with you, 100% that any niche that you are interested in, there's a Facebook group for it. Like <laughs> the obscure ones that we haven't even thought about or don't even know about, just try to look for a Facebook group or a Reddit thread or something. There's going to be some group or blog post about whatever weird stuff you're into. Yeah, for sure. The, no matter how obscure. Yeah. I should say obscure, not weird. That's it's probably a market for nearly anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to our tips on how to find your niche. I think that we are pretty good experts on how to find niches. And I think we've given you some really good advice. So we're going to move on into the tough war updates part of the show, which I, I like to see that you're a little bit more excited about it this time. The last time it was just literal crickets. <laughs> <laughs> when I, when I rolled into Tough War Update, I thought Dude, about dropping it days, off. days, man. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, you were smelling the dinner that you had been working hard cooking. Maybe, that was cooking. Yeah, I <laughs> but I like the Tough War Update because it's something really excited that we went into. We're a very, very brand new small business. Mm -hmm. We ended up coming across a a storage unit full of Tough War that was billed to us as being 500 pieces of Tupperware, which has turned out to be a lot more than 500 pieces. Yeah, spoiler alert. It's more than 500. Yeah, spoiler <laughs> alert. But we purchased it for $1,000. So $1,000, 500 pieces of Tupperware. That's $2 a piece for the Tupperware. And then the cost to get down there, so all in, cost was $1,900. Wow, it's been quite a lot. So even at $1,900 with 500 pieces of Tupperware, that was still four dollars a piece for the temper that we bought well so far just uh after the ebay fees alone we've uh had a gross of thirty six hundred and three dollars and fifty five cents i know that's beautiful so then you take away the nineteen hundred dollars that we spent on the tupperware and getting it that leaves us with a net profit of $1,703.55 so far so far and you know i've already put in a lot of work because currently I think we have oh, several hundred pieces of Tupperware posted still um, that yeah. have the potential to sell and probably will sell eventually. And so, so we've from here it can only go up. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> so so far we've sold 214 listings, and some of those have been bundled items, so they're sure. more than one piece. Mm -hmm. And then uh, so that leaves us with an average net profit. We actually increased in our sales. Yeah. Uh, to $16.83 net profit that's in our pocket for each listing that we had. And so far you've listed, this is amazing to me. This is mind blowing that you've listed this many. They just keep posting Tupperware. But you, <laughs> you've listed 748 Tupperware listings so far. I know. And like y'all, my garage is still full of Tupperware. Yeah. Uh, like every time I go out and I think which box am I going to bring in next to work on, um, I feel like I can see that it is going down. I can oh, so visually dark. see a difference. But every time I open up some of the larger boxes that are just full to the brim, I think, oh, there's still so much more. And where am I going to put all of this? Because I'm getting to the end of the boxes having little things in them. And now I'm starting to get to the boxes that have bigger things. Oh, really? Them. They're bigger things? Yeah, a lot of bigger things. And so... Um, our current strategy for uh, storing them is great, and the system that we have worked out has has proven to be very the, successful. The reason why she's looking off camera to the left <laughs> is it's because there's a stack of Tupperware bins. There's a stack of bins in our living room. I am surrounded by bins always. <laughs> um, it works really, really well. Um, but some of these larger pieces, if we continue to use the same bin, then we're not going to fit very many into each bin because the volume size of them is just going to like be huge and I won't be able to fill all the dead space with littler things until we get more littler things and I'm not going to get more littler things until we are done posting Tupperware. So um, I'm really going to have to rethink the larger items into bigger tubs and I'm also a little tired of buying plastic tubs honestly. <laughs> I, 
I mean, I know that that's the way to keep them yeah. clean and well stored and that kind of thing. Because sometimes that would happen to, to clean up some of these items a little bit um, for dust or like little garage bits, you know, that are on them. The last thing you want to do is not know where your stuff is. Got to know where the you stuff is. You have to inventory your ha stuff. have to know where it is. And I need them to be in a little bit something more secure than a cardboard box if they're going to be, yeah. you know, in condition. So I know I don't have much of a choice, but it just is a lot. Yeah. The good thing, the good thing with the boxes being, uh, getting lo less in our garage though is now I can build those shelves out there That'll and help. we can slide the tubs in there. And if we need to buy the, instead of the little clear totes that we're buying, we can buy the big black, black and yellow Costco's. I think we're going to have to commit to at least a couple of rows of the larger totes and you know one of the people that i follow that i admire the most is the bearded um thrifter thrifter mm -hmm. i really like him and his wife started Chris. Yeah, yeah she started posting videos about how she packages up things and i've they, actually talked to him quite a few times on instagram he's yeah, a nice guy they're so nice i always try to leave really encouraging comments mm -hmm. on their social media because sometimes he'll say like negative things and i'm like your products are are awesome you don't need to be disparaging yeah <laughs> um, but they have you know you can see into their home and into their areas that they're working and mm -hmm. they have a wide variety they don't they haven't picked one singular storage option um, they have lots of different ways and places that they're storing these items into their home and probably their garage as well and so as much as i like the uniformity of the clear bins um well, I'm going to need something a little bigger in there. And it doesn't really matter if I can see into it. I mean, it helps, but as long as I know which one to go to, that's all that really matters. So. And I hope I'm not getting confused, but I want to say that Chris and his wife, they have, a, it's a one car garage and they have a spare bedroom that they ship their stuff out of. And his stuff is just two rows, you know, and he does a massive amount of sales. And when you look on our social media, you know, I don't know if it's over a weekend or not, but they're they're filling up like a, the back of their truck full of cells. Frequently. I know. I mean, even on our largest after that um, Thanksgiving weekend. Like 28. You know, we just had so many and yeah. I spent forever packaging them up. I They had they showed their videos of just like the entire back of a pickup truck filled with like 50, 60 packages. And I think like. Wow, <laughs> you know? but you can also see in the background that they are they are storing stuff inside of their home, but on shelves in cardboard. Boxes. It's very organized, very, very clean. I know, very clean, very organized. There's nothing unpresentable about it. But, and it's um, a small space, so it just goes to tell you that you can do this on a large scale in a small space. And you do not need to spend a ton of money. We we mm -hmm. have invested in clear totes but i mean they are using a lot of boxes they have a box system you can see it in their mm -hmm. photos so don't think that you know if you're just getting started you don't you, you don't have to go to spend the money at costco for totes it, it is nice no. but you don't have to in the the totes aren't that expensive either no. so you can pick them up at yard sales we've probably picked a few of ours up at yard sales yeah we you liked the clear ones and wanted them to be really consistent but I think yeah okay. my brain has to be like same colors black and yellow the black and yellow ones and then the clear costco started having the clear ones and it was like oh my gosh now you see my inventory the clear <laughs> ones are the size i love it they're manageable well it's All what right. it is we we, uh, we ebb and we flow we learn and we go right <laughs> yeah it's perfect i think the system is working out well for us all right so i have trivia for you oh boy <laughs> i know and uh, it is niche trivia. Oh, wonderful. But I have to warn you, I they are ridiculous, and I don't think that you'll get a single one of them, but they're so funny that I had to leave them in there. All right, well, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I was Usually I tidy, tidy them up, and I make a, a multiple choice or something like that to make it a little bit more easier. Oh, we're not doing that today? <laughs> no, these are just ridiculous. Because the things that I came across on niche trivia was just... Amazing. I'm sure it's quite eclectic and that you've probably intentionally made it extra hard for me. So <laughs> Not let's hard, just go ahead just and funny. Get, let's just go ahead and get the embarrassment over with, shall we? <laughs> okay, Jennifer, what niche hobby involves meticulously judging the fluffiness of other people's cats online? So people are judging the fluffiness, the fluffiness of other of people's, people's cats, cats. There's online. There's a word for that? There is. Fluffiness, huh? Yes. I sincerely do not know okay. the word for that. <laughs> it is called comp 
competitive cat brushing. And yes, it's a real thing. Competitive. Competitive cat like brushing. With medals and Yeah, and exactly. Kind of okay. like the dog the dog shows and stuff I like that. Well, they have a fluffiness for their cats. I'm going to go ahead and say I didn't know that one since we can go ahead and make excuses. Um, I'm a little allergic to cats. And so I don't really care much about cats. <laughs> <laughs> There's a niche for it. I wouldn't be brushing one. In fact, I try not to touch them even because they just make Aww, me a little itchy. I love cats. They're so cute. They are they are exceptionally cute. But yeah, um, if I touch them and I touch my eyes, it's over. It's just, so, they love you and they love you and then they go away when you're done. I, I kind of like that about their attitude. Yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> I'm a little like a cat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So question number two, what niche market features miniature versions of everyday objects, but they do not, they absolutely do not have anything to do with dollhouses. They don't have anything to do with dollhouses? No. Miniature household objects that have nothing to do with dollhouses. So you're saying that there's a word for miniatures that isn't miniatures? <laughs> no, there's a there is a market, a market that has miniature versions of everyday objects. So like, I don't know, couches and pans and pots and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But they have absolutely nothing to do with dollhouses. Okay. So that's that was my first thought. For little kids, is it would go for dollhouses, sure. right? Little pots and pans. Yeah, but it's not for that. It is not. It's just little tiny mm. things that are collectively. But they collected. go for a specific thing. For a hobby? But they're not dollhouses. It's a hobby, but it's not dollhouses. Yeah, so it goes to a specific thing that you would think would go to a dollhouse, but it's not. It goes to something else. I find that it feels like there are a lot of people who have a lot more free time than I do. <laughs> um, and I am, I'm frankly, I am jealous. Um, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> how do I become a person with such a niche hobby? I don't know the answer Well, to with that. this one, I don't <laughs> think you'll be interested in coming in this niche hobby okay. because... These tiny objects are made specifically for mice. They are oh tiny tools for mice. So oh. things like wrenches and saws and hammers, and they're only about the size of a sunflower. Okay, I, there is one account on social media that I follow that is absolutely adorable. It's called Philly Chinchilli. He's a chinchilla. <laughs> he's nice. Philly Chinchilli. Okay. Um, he's a chinchilla, and his person, his owner, has taught him, and she does real ca quick captures of him holding little things. Mm -hmm. And it is possibly the most adorable thing you've ever seen. Um, chinchillas are really fluffy and furry. And yeah. um, they were almost extinct because I think people like to make coats and things out of them. And their fur is incredibly dense. Like so many more hairs come out of one follicle on a chinchilla than mm -hmm. others. But he, their little hands and their little expressive eyes are just so cute. And she has them hold like little signs. She puts like little tiny crowns yeah. on them and like little tools okay. in his hand. And so, I mean, I could become a person who has that hobby for sure. For the chinchillas? The, Not the mice though, right? I, I don't know if I'm allergic to, to, to a chinchilla, um, but I, it, is a, it is a strong possibility that I could become a chinchilla <laughs> owner one day. Oh. Um, with little no, things. I don't think so. He's super cute. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. With all of our cats, we're going to be cat and chinchilla people oh, soon. No. Oh, gosh. Nice. All right. The last one and the most interesting one to me. Okay. Because I actually kind of knew about this one. <clears throat> and Maybe it's, I do. It's super obscure. <laughs> but what surprisingly lucrative niche involves collecting? So you you have to give me the name of this niche. What surprisingly lucrative niche involves collecting and selling belly button lint? What is the name for it? And bonus points. Gross. If, well, it's called gross. Bonus <laughs> points if you know how much it goes per gram. Oh, that's so <laughs> gross. I just have us throw up a little. Um, I don't know. I know that there are like funny stories of Britney Spears' chewing gum being sold and like people's earwax yeah. and like, Ugh. oh, it was like soiled. Um, items of of, uh -huh. of different kinds so i know that there exists a whole world that i want to be nothing a part of like and belly button lint's one of the ones that you don't want anything you to have any. you can squarely put that on the list of things All that right. i'm not interested in um I, take I don't, a guess what the name is uh, depraved i, I don't know, <laughs> <Depraved>. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so i'm going to give it a shot to try to pronounce this word and it's called umphalophilus umphalophilus 
<laughs> well, alrighty then. Let's just take a second and have oh, and ask Google <clears throat> to pronounce this for I us. Don't know. I don't I, It's too far. Well, it literally it's too up. far. It's too much. What? No. Too zany. It's too out of there. Out there. Like, people just need to read a book <laughs> or take up hammocking or a, a bath. Like, so many things that you could do. <laughs> Was that right? Did I spell it right? Uh -huh. H. I pronounce it. On What? How do you it's say Like, as a lisp. On Fadulet. On Fadulet. On Fadulet. On Fadulet. All right, there you go. That is how you pronounce <laughs> <laughs> the specific niche. <laughs> would we call it niche or fetish oh. of how to pronounce our for belly button? I don't know, but this just feels like it's circling the drain. <laughs> it did go down pretty quick. <laughs> it went downhill surprisingly fast. <laughs> yep, but that's great. And this surprised me a lot. You know what it actually sells for? $50 per gram of belly button lint. Do you think that we could pass off like the dryer lint? No. Because I, I have- It's gotta like, come I, out of the belly button. I mean, oh, no. I could put it in my belly button for a second and put it in a bag. <laughs> okay, for $50 a gram. <laughs> I'm just saying like- Are they gonna work? <laughs> if that's the secret to like making this sustainable, I would consider it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start collecting belly button lint and it's gonna be a new line item in our Pickers podcast. Oh, no eBay store. It's just bad. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. I should have apologized in advance. <laughs> I should have not. <laughs> this is horrible. All right. Thanks for sticking with us. And it will be surprising if you have. <laughs> and you stuck around. Well, lately I've been doing all the YouTube shorts of just our trivia. So <laughs> that's what's been going on social oh, media. Goody. I know. Those I can't wait for my mother to see that. <laughs> those are the best ones. All right, fellow pickers, go find your treasures one story at a time. And remember, it's not reselling if you're not selling your belly button lint. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I can't be the ending. <laughs>